The tree patches refer to the triumvirate of senior officers who effectively ruled the Ottoman Empire during World War I. Mehmet Talat Pasha, the Grand Vizier, which is the Prime Minister and the Minister of the Interior, Ismail Enver Pasha, the Minister of War, and Hamed Di Jamal Pasha, the Minister of the Navy. They were largely responsible for the Empire's entry into World War I in 1914. Now let's look at the Pashas. Talat Pasha or Mehmet Talat was one of the earliest leaders of the Young Turk movement, spending time in prison for subversive activities. After the revolution of 1908, he was elected as a deputy to parliament, as subsequently held important ministerial posts. He gave up his hopes to form an alliance with Russia, and after denying as long as possible, turned to the Germans, and worked with Enver to enter the war on their side. During the war, as Minister of the Interior, he ordered the infamous deportation of Armenian Christians. At war's end, he was a Grand Vizier, or the Prime Minister, and after the surrender with Enver and Jamal they fled to the Germans. Jamal Pasha or Hamet Jamal was a professional army officer who displayed skills as both an administrator and a propagandist. After the coup d'etat of 1913, Jamal became the highly important governor of Constantinople and was quite influential in formulating foreign policies for the government. His preference was to join in an alliance with France and Britain, but his efforts had failed and he eventually joined his fellow Pashas in fighting for the Germans. He opened the war as Minister of the Marine later becoming the military governor of Syria and commander of the Turkish 4th Army. T.E. Lawrence reported that he was considered a butcher by the empire's Arab subjects and later was sentenced to death in Abstinia for hanging Arabs suspected of treason. After the war, he fled Turkey and died in Tbilisi, Georgia. And finally, the most infamous pasha of them all, Enver Pasha or Ismail Enver was also a professional army officer, one with dreams of expanding the Ottoman Empire and bringing it back to its 16th century glory. He was the organiser of the 1908 revolt and advanced rapidly thereafter, serving with distinction in the Italo-Turkish War and the First Balkan War and was also an attaché to Berlin. He led the coup d'etat that brought the Young Turks into full power in 1913 and entered the cabinet as Minister of War. He was the most pro-German of the Young Turks. He played a key role in joining the war on Germany's side. His military leadership and planning during the war, however, were disastrous. When defeat came, he fled to Germany, pursuing his grandiose fantasies through the Middle East and Asia, but he would soon meet the same fate as Mehmet and Hamed. They were all members of the Committee of Union and Progress, a progressive organization that eventually came to control and transform into a primarily pan-Turkish political party, which meant in the words of Enver Pasha, relocating the Dihim, the non-Muslim population of the Ottoman Empire. The three Pashas were the principal players in the Ottoman-German alliance and the Ottoman Empire's entry into World War I on the side of the Central Powers. One of the three, Hamed de Jamal, was opposed to the alliance with Germany and the French and Russian diplomacy attempted to keep the Ottoman Empire out of the war, but Germany was agitating for a commitment. Finally, on the 29th of October, the point of no return was reached when Admiral Wilhelm Shushen took the SMS Gerben and the SMS Breslau and a squadron of Ottoman warships into the Black Sea and raided the Russian ports of Odessa, Sevastopol, and Teodosa. It was also claimed that Hamed Di Jamal agreed in early October 1914 to authorize Admiral Shushen to launch a preemptive strike on the Russians. Enver Pasha had only once taken control of any military activity, the Battle of Sadakamish, which saw his soldiers freeze and die in the Caucasus Mountains and left the Turd army in ruins. The first Suez offensive and the Arab revolt was Hamed Di Jamal's most significant failures. As the, as the de facto rulers, the three Pashas had been considered the masterminds behind the Armenian genocide. After the war, the three were put on trial, but they were absent as they fled the country, and they were supposed to be sentenced to death. Although the sentences were not carried out, Talat and Dijamal were assassinated in 1921 and 1922 respectively by Armenians, and Enver was also killed by Armenian in Tajikistan in 1922 while trying to raise a Muslim anti russian insurrection against the Bolshevik government there. Although it was a communist Armenian, but still, the Red Army got them all in the end. After World War I and the ensuing Turkish War of Independence, much of the population of the newly established Republic of Turkey, as well as its founder Mustafa Kemal Ataturk, widely criticized the tree patches for having caused the Ottoman Empire's entry into World War I and, of course, the subsequent collapse of the state. As early as 1912, Ataturk, Destin Mustafa Kemal, had severed his ties with the tree patches Committee of Union and Progress, dissatisfied with the direction that the party had taken, as well as developing a rivalry with Enver Pasha. Although Enver Pasha later attempted to join the Turkish War of Independence, the Ankara government under Ataturk blocked his return to Turkey and his efforts to join the war effort. And those are the three Pashas, the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker, 
Larry Curly Moe Hindendorf Ludendorff Hindenburg Ludendorff the Kaiser The three people who ruled the Ottoman Empire during World War I and escaped death by a military tribunal but the Red Army, well the Armenians got them in the end. Thanks guys for watching. Well, two the minutes, not bad, not bad. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. Jihad, probably tomorrow. A bit scared, but you know, all it's all for learning purposes only. We're not having it an insurrection. We're not gonna raise a Muslim Taliban. So, it's all for fun and learning. And yeah, I'm not scared, scared, but you know, I don't want someone saying my name and then Allah Akbar. So, anyway, hope you learned something. And I'll see you in the next video. Maybe, maybe not. Hala sam halayakum, my friends. Yeah, I'm learning. That's that's Arabic, not Turkish. But I'm getting there. You gotta do minority report after jihad. So you gotta learn some Lebanese, some let's see, um, Afghanese, um, Jewish. Yeah, we're gonna touch on the Jews in this episode as well. Well, in this season, so. It's going to be spanning all across the globe, but you'll see that episode. But anyway, learn something.